We've released the anterior fibers and medius and tendon and minimus. Hold this, please. And our two blunt Romans are going above and below the femoral neck. Nice shot, Roman Rome. Well, and the interesting thing is, this woman's actually got a gluteal avulsion. See, you look here. You see, this is bare bone. So one of the reasons she was so sore was she's pulled off the fibers of medius and tendon and minimus. So we'll have to make sure we fix that at the end. So we're now looking directly at the hip joint capsule. And you can see it pretty clearly there. So we really have very good exposure almost immediately. We're now cutting the hip joint capsule. And we're simply going to excise it. the landrum that we're excising here. And we can now see, we can virtually dislocate the hip by pulling on that home. And so we'll now take the neck with the sorrow. I prefer to cut it with the, I mean you could dislocate it easy, but I prefer to cut it with the neck and side cheek. That's the neck broken out. I'm not going to take the head. So we use a corkscrew to pull the head out. Okay, so we got the head out. Okay, on it. Now I'm going to need to shorten that neck. You can now see the neck coming up very easily. So we'll just shorten that. Now we can clear the capsule and then we'll put in the retractors. And that's in. Good, we can put me on the retractors now. Good. 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 No. One of the black strings. And now we've got pretty good exposure. I'm about to start dreaming, I've got pretty good exposure here. I'm dreaming two millimetres at a time up. I'm dreaming odd to put in an even cut. And we want to make sure that you have full contact anteriorly and posteriorly. But once you have that, that's as big as you need to go. And I don't think you should go any bigger than you need to go. So yes, we could go bigger in this case if we had to, but there's no sense in going any bigger than we must. Don't me a 50 pinnacle, please. 50? 50, 50 50. When I put it in, what I'm doing is I'm essentially looking up the patient's body axis. Yeah. So that's her body axis. So I'm going to put it in about 20 degrees of antiversion, which is that. I'm going to put it in 45 degrees with respect to the floor. Without any screws, I don't think they're necessary. Okay. So that's 45 degrees. This is the body axis, that's about 20 degrees of antiversion. And she's down and the cup looks very stable. But you cannot tell if you're all the way down without having a visualisation port. But of course if you have a visualisation port, it then gives access from the polyethylene to the back of the cup. 
So we'd like to occlude that with something. And that's the, that's the bottom of the cup sealed. And we just have to put the polyethylene in there. So we've, we've lined up, so we're, and we're making sure that the thing is not oblique. That doesn't matter so much with plastic, but an oblique insertion with hard hard bearing is obviously not a good thing to do. So she's now locked in place. Good, so now we're looking right at the neck of the femur. It's still covered by muscle, so we're going to release the muscle just a little bit, the knife will this is the medial calcar area, this is the greater trochanter, this is what's left of the upper end of the neck. So we have to take that out, and we're taking that out right now. And then, I'm going to rasp on Then, what, let me look so. Then, you need to find the canal. And I find the best thing to find the canal is the Mueller reamer. Or this is really a match it down. Because you can simply wiggle it down, so you can find the canal without any force at all, and then make a little back cut into the trochanter. So you're essentially opening it up atraumatically. Then you must know that your original rima is not going to be forced out of position. And you see we're fairly clear there. So we're now going to start rima. I templated this lady somewhere between 13 and 15. This is the scribe mark, and we're measuring from the top of the trope just here. This is a 9.5. This is 10. This is 10.5. probably could go up in one millimetre bites, but I think it helps to center in the canal we've got by half a millimetre. So we're starting to run into a little distal resistance. So 13 may be the right size. Now this is where we make the decision. And you need to begin to cut bone. and it's starting to force. I ream on drill because you can hear it stall out. So I think that's tight enough. What do you think, Al? So we're going to stop at 13, except, except for the conus region of the prosthesis. That's the scribe mark. Okay, so I'm going to ream halfway down, just through the conus area. But you see, we've left, that, that would be full depth. So the green to the minor diameter. So the green is called color coded. So this is the green at the bottom means small green, the middle means medium green, the upper end means large. Anything that everything now is green because we stopped at 13. Where your little finger touches the anterior cortex, and the anterior cortex just here is smooth. That's the size. So we're stopping at that. Again, you can see that it's the same color code system. The green at the bottom is the small. We've reamed the conus area here. So we're going to put it down to it jams in the conus. The top of the trochanter corresponds to that line. So we're now going to use a calcar miller. I may need to trim a little more neck. You see, I've done no neck trimming at all. I'm just leaving things as where they are just now. You don't worry about version angle here, you just go for coverage. I'm going for maximum fill of the metaphyseal region um, by, this, by the sleeve, because the stem can be put in with any version with respect to the sleeve. It's one of the reasons I like tight heads. If you use loose heads, they come off easily and fall on the floor. What's even worse is when sometimes when you reduce them, 
the hip goes anterior. And so it goes into the pelvis when you pull it back to his left inside the pelvis. And I can tell you, taking a trial head out of the pelvis, if you've done it once, you will really want that head to stick tight, tight, tight. I don't care if you've got a head up the hammer to take the trial off, but finding a, a trial head inside the belly, inside the pelvis, is not fun. So it's bloodless, it's quick. Um, and you see the common, one of the common air problems is this, she's, she's able to their glutei on the way in. And doing it through the anterior approach, it will be easy to reattach the, 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 the muscle. But it's just as simple, and the posterior capsule is largely intact, so the dislocation rate is very much less. Certainly if you're doing an endoprosthesis for a fracture, this is the preferred approach. And what about post-op gait? Any problem with the anterior lateral? No, gait? people say they limp off the anterior lateral. That's only if you extend the incision up two inches above the trochanter, because two inches above the trochanter you have the nerve to tensor. And if you damage the nerve to tensor, then the patient's going to limp. The other reason is I see people reattaching the anterior fibers of medius and tendon and minimus with one purse string suture. That tends not to work. And of course, if the muscle does not reattach to bone, the patient's going to limp permanently. And I think a lot of the limps are either nerve to tensor damage, which you can show with EMGs, or failure to reattach the glutei. Look like you need to take it down. We're sitting right in the room, maybe it is a bit long. Maybe it will take it down a bit more. Okay, we've decided we're going to take her down just a little more because she feels, she feels long to us. Okay, so it's easy enough to take her down a bit more. Now I need you to hold more. The, the whole thing must be done. Thank you.